Hey, and welcome to today's video where we will look at an anime called Salad Bowl of Eccentrics. When the seventh princess of the Ofen Empire, Sarah, crash lands on Earth after a daring escape through a magical portal, she literally squashes a clueless detective named Sosuke, who is just about to solve the case of his life. With her bodyguard Livia hot on her heels, Sarah teams up with the bumbling Sosuke, turning his detective dreams upside down with a bit of royal magic and a lot of chaos. Follow us through this as we properly dive into the full story. Don't hesitate to leave in the comment section what anime you want us to recap for your entertainment. The seventh princess of the Ofen Empire, Sarah, and her bodyguard Livia manage to escape from the palace after a coup. However, they are being chased down by the rebels. Livia stays back to fight the enemies off while Sarah tries to make a break for it. Sarah, with no better option than to take her bodyguard's advice, sprints off like she's late for tea, aiming for the conveniently placed portal that just happens to connect worlds. As the rebels close in, she takes a leap of faith or more like a leap of desperation into the portal, hoping to land somewhere far, far away from her pursuers. On Earth, a not-so-brilliant detective named Sosuke is clumsily tailing a suspect, convinced he's on the verge of his big break. Just as he's about to close in, bam, out of nowhere, a girl literally drops from the sky and lands right on top of him, squashing his detective dreams and sending his target off into the sunset. Sosuke is shocked to see a girl coming out of nowhere and to make things worse, he is wounded from the fall. Being a gentlewoman, Sarah offers to heal his wounds. Sosuke is blown away when Sarah places her hand on his hand and releases magical energy to heal him. Sosuke is all impressed by this, and Sosuke decides to sit down to have a discussion with the strange girl. Sarah lets Sosuke know that she is from another world and in fact, she has magical powers. Sosuke is curious about the type of powers the girl has, and when Sarah blasts open the ground in front of them, Sosuke drags her out of there. Sosuke has seen enough already, and doesn't want her to destroy the entire area with her powers. Back in Ofim, Livia, the unstoppable bodyguard, finally finishes wiping the floor with the enemy soldiers and dives into the portal after her princess. She lands on Earth with a thud, looking like she's just crawled out of a medieval horror movie. Noticing that everyone's scattering like she's the star of a monster flick, Livia decides it's probably time to clean up. She heads to a nearby river, not exactly a luxury bath but it'll do, and proceeds to scrub off the battle grime. She also manages to catch a bunch of fish which she grills to satisfy her hunger. But then, the skies open up and it starts pouring. Looking for shelter, Livia ducks under a bridge, where she bumps into a scruffy looking guy who's clearly made this spot his home. The homeless guy introduces himself as Suzuki, and it seems Livia is going to join him under the bridge. Sosuke takes Sarah to his house to care for her. He plans to discard her the next morning but he starts rethinking his choices when he learns that Sarah would have to wipe his memories before she leaves. There is no guarantee that he won't lose years of memories if Sarah performs the ritual on him. Sosuke has no choice but to beg Sarah to stay at his house just because he is not ready to become an invalid. Livia also gets to spend the night with Suzuki acting as a guardian. The next morning, the damage caused by Sarah makes it to the news with authorities wondering what might have caused it. Sosuke is the only one who knows, because the culprit is sitting right next to him, enjoying a delicious meal. Later that day, Sarah offers to start helping Sosuke with his detective work since she has magical powers. In addition to this, Sarah appears to be a fast learner, as she is already able to go through some detective manga and learn a lot from them. Sosuke has always dreamed of becoming a great detective and he just might hit the jackpot if he plays his cards right. After this, Sosuke continues tailing his original target, whose wife suspects that he is cheating. Sosuke follows the guy till he enters an abandoned warehouse leaving Sosuke to wonder if the guy is meeting with his mistress inside the warehouse. In a turn of events, Sosuke realizes that the guy is not actually cheating but he is being extorted by a bunch of crooks. Sosuke wants to turn a blind eye to this and just reports back to his client that her husband is not cheating but he decides to step in when the crooks start beating the victim for failing to bring the right amount of money. Sosuke walks into the warehouse, looking all confused. The crooks wonder what the dipshit is thinking when he decides to walk in on them. Sosuke is about to get the worst beating of his life, when Sarah shows up and throws away the enemies with her wind magic. Sosuke is shocked to see the girl, and Sarah reveals that she has been tailing Sosuke because she had the feeling that he was going to get attacked. Sarah sees herself as a fully-fledged detective as she proudly introduces herself to the crooks. The crooks gather around to attack Sosuke but they keep coming one by one, giving Sosuke the chance to beat them to a freaking pulp. Sarah and Sosuke somehow manage to team up and give the bad guys the beating of a lifetime, leaving them sprawled on the ground, barely able to wiggle a finger. Sosuke, ever the professional, ties them up with whatever rope he can find, then sits down to wait for the cops like it's just another day at the office. Meanwhile, Sarah decides she's had enough drama for one day and takes off, 
leaving him to handle the cleanup. That night, Sarah and Sosuke get to eat the best steak that they can get as a reward for completing their mission. The two end up arguing over dinner because Sosuke doesn't want Sarah to put herself in danger, but Sarah reminds the airhead that she is not an ordinary girl. They end up making a toast to their new work relationship. Following Livia's story, she tells Suzuki about Sarah and the need to find her. Suzuki replies that she is going to need a detective if she ever has the chance to find Sarah. However, she is going to need money if she is to hire a detective. Her current job of packing cans is not paying much, leaving Livia totally discouraged because there is no way for her to get money. Later that day, Livia and Suzuki show up at the usual homeless people gathering to get food. Just then, some guys show up telling Livia that she can earn cool cash as long as she is ready to work for them. Suzuki knows the guys are up to no good. He tries to talk Livia out of it, but she's so desperate for money that she doesn't even think twice before saying yes imagining all the ways she could fill her empty pockets. Later that night, Livia is taken to a club where she is to begin her work. Unknown to Livia, she is being hired as an escort, but because she is not from this world, she doesn't know what she is jumping into. It starts dawning on her that she might have made the wrong decision when she is required to wear revealing clothes. She is then told to sit down beside a perv inside a nightclub. The client fondles her melons but drops money on them. Livia is enticed by the money but she knows what is happening is actually wrong. Livia is contemplating what to do when the police raid the establishment, putting the entire night program to an end. The girls are put in a separate room, and Livia learns that they are going to be questioned. Not in the mood to stick around for a police Q&A, she makes a split-second decision jumps out of a window, and escapes with the agility of a ninja monkey. Livia then returns to the bridge where she apologizes to Suzuki for not taking his advice. Suzuki lets the girl know that he is not angry at her. At least, she has learned her lesson. Suzuki then lets her know that he has been able to find a detective agency that doesn't charge much. Suzuki points Livia in the right direction, and Livia heads to the agency building the following day. Luckily for her, it turns out to be Sosuke's agency. Livia rings the bell, and she is shocked when Sarah shows up at the door to open for her. At the same time, she is happy that the princess is alive. These two are happy to see each other, but the same cannot be said for Sosuke who is thinking about the new addition to the already cramped up house. Sosuke voices out the fact that he cannot take in the two girls, but they manage to convince him with the fact that Livia will also start working for him. Later that night, Livia goes back to the bridge to thank Suzuki for his help, and before leaving, she advises the guy to return to his house because she is confident that he has a place he can call home. After Livia leaves, Suzuki actually puts a call through to one of his associates, leaving us all wondering if this homeless guy is actually some undercover billionaire or secret agent. Shortly afterward, Sosuke decides to fire Livia because she is not cut out for the detective job. Livia accepts Sosuke's verdict, but instead of sitting around with nothing to do, Livia tells Sosuke that she is going to leave. Livia wants to find her own home and job without being a burden to anyone. Before leaving, she begs Sosuke to take proper care of the princess in her absence. Livia's status immediately changes from being a detective's assistant back to being homeless. Up next, Sosuke and Sarah meet with one of Sosuke's clients, who is also a lawyer. She is a redhead, and her name is Brenda. Sosuke introduces Sarah to Brenda as a transfer student from Sweden. Sosuke and Sarah cook up a very good story to throw Brenda off in case she tries digging into Sarah's background. Brenda finds it hard to believe that Sarah is a detective, and the girl tries to defend herself. She assures Brenda that she has read lots of detective manga, which makes her qualified for the job, apparently. After going back and forth on introductions and the like, Brenda assigns the case they are to work on. They are to investigate a 34-year-old old woman who is a housewife. The husband wants a divorce, but she has refused. The husband is the client, and he wants them to look into his wife. Sosuke and Sarah take on the job in no time. To properly watch the client's house, Sarah would have loved to use her invincibility power, but her magic power is not up to the level that she needs. Sosuke and Sarah remain in the car, watching the house until the landscaper shows up. The landscaper is known to frequent the house regularly. After an hour and there is no sign of the landscaper, Sarah decides to check out the house. She casually levitates into the air, hoping to get a better look at the situation, but what she sees nearly makes her drop out of the sky. She returns to the car with a video of the landscaper giving it hot to the client's wife. This comes as a complete shocker, but the detectives already have the evidence that they need. When they return to Brenda, she is impressed with their work and decides to pay them even extra for a job well done. Sosuke lies to Brenda that he used a drone to get the picture, because the lady is already wondering how he did it. After the day's work, Sosuke and Sarah get to enjoy the pay that comes afterward. Livia begins her journey to become independent, and the first place she returns to is the bridge. By the time she gets there, Suzuki is already gone. Now left to her choices, Livia is forced to fry a bunch of grasshoppers to eat since she is not ready to die just yet. She then meets with the homeless people who inform her that they have gatherings at night. Livia shows up at the gathering, 
Spring, serving everybody Grasshopper, and surprisingly, it is a delicacy that they actually love. While she is having fun, Sosuke sneaks up to check on her, and he is relieved that the girl is actually holding up. The next morning, Livia is approached by two guys, Aoki and Saito, telling Livia that they are from the Branch Hill organization. They are an organization that gives to the needy and takes care of people's support. They want Livia to become a clan member, and in addition to this, she is going to get a place to live and something to do. Meanwhile, Sosuke is telling Sarah about the evil organizations present in the city, who are always ready to lure people in so that they brainwash them. On the other hand, Livia has arrived at the Branch Hill clan, and Saito explains some basics to her. He lets her know that they do not use the Japanese yen in the clan. They have their own currency called the Hillbills. This is acquired by contributing to the success of the clan. Plan. For fun, Saito suggests that they engage in basketball. Livia has never done this before, but the moment Saito shows her how it is done, she immediately becomes a pro at it. This leaves the entire players and spectators wondering just who the fug Livia is. She even makes a long and what seems to be an impossible dunk. After the game, they tell Livia that the master of the clan, Noah, will be giving a speech. Noah is highly respected and even considered to have divine powers which she uses in helping people. This is a shock to Livia because she isn't expecting anyone in the city to have magic not to talk of divine powers. Livia follows Saito into a hall where they are to receive Noah, but before her appearance, Livia is shown an entertainment video to depict the purpose of the clan. During the entire video, Livia notices flashes but ignores them. After the video, she talks to Aoki about the flashes but it doesn't seem Aoki has any idea what the lady is talking about. After this, Livia joins the clan members at the diner. They are served a delicious meal, and Saito doesn't waste the opportunity to tell Livia that this is how the clan enjoy their lives. The best food that Livia has had is the grasshopper fries that she made by herself. Later on, the clan gathers to meet the master that they have all been talking about. Livia and other clan members sit in the hall, patiently waiting for the arrival of the all-powerful master. Not long after this, the master shows up, and Livia is surprised to see a young lady walk to the front of the stage. Noah starts by reminding her disciples that the world is filled with sorrow and darkness, but she assures them that they can overcome all of these once she has their support. Noah calls out a guy who has offered a huge sum of money for the clan, leaving the other clan members absolutely stunned. This motivates the other members to work even harder so that they can be like the guy. As a reward, Noah decides to protect the guy with a supposed spell that shields people away from calamity. This is a surprise to Livia because she doesn't know if there is actually a spell that works like that. Just then, the guy suddenly grabs Noah and holds a knife to her neck. The entire crowd goes into panic mode, and the guy starts telling them that they have been brainwashed. He lets them know that his sister was robbed of all her money by the clan, and this has led to the destruction of his family. Noah calms her disciples, telling them not to fret. Realizing that Noah is not ready to confess, the guy decides to try out the calamity protection spell that she put on him. The guy whips out a weapon and then stabs himself with it. Once he is bleeding out, the guy asks Noah why the spell is not working. Noah then replies that the spell is to protect him against evil, and not for physical harm. Accepted that it is to protect against evil. Use your power to save me then, the guy says. However, Noah doesn't have what it takes to do this. When Livia notices this, she jumps on stage and uses her power to heal the guy. Just as Livia is about to make her dramatic exit, Noah suddenly stands up and announces her as the long-awaited savior of the clan, like she's just won a cosmic lottery. Noah tells her that the entire clan's resources are now at her disposal, as long as she can lead them to salvation. It's like the ultimate VIP pass, but Livia is not exactly thrilled. However, Livia declines the offer and runs out of the hall before they can stop her. Livia cannot wait around with them since she still has an obligation to the princess. Up next, Sarah decides that the next thing on her list to do is learn how to ride a skateboard. She forces Sosuke to start teaching her how to go about it. They are in the middle of this when a lady named Haruka shows up. Turns out that Haruka worked in the same firm that Sosuke previously worked for, and with the way she is talking to Sosuke, she is pretty interested in the guy. Sosuke quit the big agency because he wanted to start his own agency. Surprisingly, Haruka has come to give him a job. When asked why she is helping a competitor, she simply replies that she wants the best for Sosuke. The client wants an investigation into her daughter. She believes her daughter is being bullied at school, but when she asks her, she denies the fact. After Haruka's departure, Sarah lets Sosuke know that Haruka is interested in him, because it is clearly written all over her, but Sosuke doesn't want to think too much about this. It is forbidden for them as colleagues to have an affair, and this is the reason he doesn't want to go down that road. Shortly afterward, they meet with the client who then takes them to her daughter, Yuna. Sosuke suggests that the mother stay outside while they talk to Yuna inside the room. Sarah and Sosuke calmly introduce themselves to the girl, telling her that they are there to help her. However, the girl replies that she doesn't need their help because she is not in any sort of trouble. Realizing that Yuna might be difficult if they go head on, 
Sarah decides to take another route to make the girl comfortable. Sarah starts talking about the books in the girl's room, and how she is also a book fan. The two get down to book discussion, and in the process of this, Yuna lets her guard down. Sarah tells her about the war that chased her out of her country, and uses this to indirectly ask Yuna if she is having troubles just like she did too. At this point, Yuna is vulnerable, and she lets it out that she is being bullied. The bullies pour water on her, pour water on her book, and they do all sorts of things. Sosuke is surprised to hear this, and he wonders why Yuna has not taken up action against the bullies. Turns out that the ringleader is the daughter of a company's president, and this is where Yuna's mum works. Yuna doesn't is not making a move because she doesn't want her mum to get in trouble. While she is telling the detectives all of these, her mother is at the door, hearing everything too. Since her father passed away, her mother has been the one taking care of things, and Yuna doesn't want her mother to lose her job. Just then, Yuna's mother enters the room, telling her daughter that she would have told her everything. Her mother cares for her more than she cares for her job. This is a huge relief to Yuna, who is ready to beat up the girls the next time she sees them at school. However, Sosuke suggests that they take a more peaceful approach to the problem. He gives Yuna a pen that has a camera built into it so she can record the girls in the act. The next day at school, Yuna does her best James Bond impression with the spy pen. She captures all the dirt on the bullies, giving Sosuke the ammunition he needs to make his job a whole lot easier. Sosuke then assures Yuna's mom that a lawyer will take over, leaving them free to thank the detectives profusely for saving Yuna from her would-be tormentors. After the case is settled, Sarah tells Sosuke about her desire to go to school too. She wants an avenue where she can interact with girls of her age. Shortly afterward, Sarah finds the invite to an arcade, and without a doubt, she becomes interested in it. So Suke, as usual, leaves her to do her thing. Sarah gets to have loads of fun at the arcade shopping and gallery. She even forces Sosuke to play dress up. After this, she takes a selfie with Sosuke. Later on, Sosuke decides to ask Sarah about the world where she comes from, because he is already suspecting that it is just like Japan. The magic skills that Sarah has displayed can be compared to the technological advancement in Japan, Sarah tries to throw Sosuke off the topic, but he just wouldn't budge. It turns out that Earth and where Sarah comes from originated from the same origin, but the timeline was later split by a powerful entity called Nobunaga Oda. Nobunaga, the first emperor of the empire, was the ultimate clan reuniter. Turns out Japan has a statue of him too, and Sarah and Sosuke are standing right in front of it, having an impromptu history lesson. Sarah tells Sosuke more stories about her world, till the guy bores out, and they decide to cut the discussion short. Sarah doesn't want to worry herself about her previous world, because she just wants to have fun in this world. Up next, Sarah comes again with her usual requests, and this time around, she wants Sosuke to teach her how to ride the bicycle. Sosuke has no choice but to agree to this since he has two days off from work. Following Livia's story, she decides to spend some time in the public bath, and this is where she meets one of the girls from the adult club, Asumi. Livia is surprised to see the lady at the bath, but Asumi lets her know that she only works at the adult club as a part-time job. Asumi is hustling in whatever way she can, because she is a musician, and she needs money to run her band. However, she is still in the growing stages just yet, and she cannot count herself to be a musician. Asumi and Livia seem to be the best thing to happen to Livia in a long time, as they get to have fun. Asumi suggests that they head to the sauna to spend some time, and Livia agrees. After a while in the sauna, which is basically a hot, steamy room where you feel like you're slowly turning into a human raisin, Asumi announces that it's time to visit the cold bath. Livia's never tried a cold bath before, and she's a bit nervous about plunging into an ice-cold pool of doom. This is the first time Livia will be trying the cold bath, but actually feels nice when she enters the water. Asumi then lets her know that they are going to do this on repeat. It is basically a set for Asumi, and she has done this lots of times. After the third set, Livia feels much better than she has felt in a long time. When Asumi gets home, she is shocked to receive bad news. It turns out her band members are leaving her since there is no money to fund the project, and they are struggling to even get views on their videos. The band members do not think there is a future for the band, and this is the reason they need to back off. Asumi gets on her knees, trying to convince them, but none of them is ready to stay with her any longer. Later on, Sosuke takes Sarah to what seems to be a good restaurant, where she gets to try out nice dishes. Sarah gets interested in a particular dish, and the waiter lets her know that she can get it if she sings for them. Without thinking twice, Sarah gets on stage and starts performing her heart out. Coincidentally, Asumi is also in the restaurant and she enjoys Sarah's performance. Feeling the electric vibe in the room, Asumi decides to get in on the action and show off her own talent. She takes the stage with a dramatic flourish, and the crowd goes wild. It's as if she's magically transformed into a rock star for the night. The applause is so thunderous that even Sosuke, who's usually too cool for school, can't help but ask if Asumi's a pro. Asumi just laughs it off, admitting she's still a work in progress, and hoping one day she'll be the superstar she dreams of being. For now, she's just thrilled to have wowed the crowd and kept the fun rolling. Later on, Livia is enjoying her drink at the park, when the guy who recruited her for the adult club shows up yet again, probably with another terrible offer. Livia becomes defensive when she sees the guy, 
but the guy assures her that he is not there for anything, and in addition, Livia accepts the adult club offer without being forced. The guy lets Livia know that he is there with another offer, and this time around, Livia is going to help save the world, he claims. Livia is happy to hear this, and decides to listen to what the guy has to say. The guy wants Livia to line up in front of a shop and buy merchandise for him. When Livia asks him why he is not doing this himself, the guy finds a way to convince her and lie to her. After giving Livia some of the dumbest excuses ever, Livia agrees to do what the guy wants. The following day, Livia is in front of one of the stores buying goods and merchandise. By the end of the day, she has purchased a lot, and the guy's van is now full. This continues the next day, when the guy sends Livia to buy toys and other figurines. Livia is even asked a quiz question inside the shop, but she already has an answer that was given to her by the guy. With this, the second day also comes out pretty successful. Livia earns her pay and smiles as she walks down the road. Livia runs into Sarah, who is on her bicycle training session with Sosuke. It is a surprise to see Livia, and when the two show concern about her well-being, she assures them that she is doing quite fine. Livia then tells the two about her new job, but after narrating the job description, Sosuke realizes that Livia is involved in something that is actually illegal. Apparently the guy is a reseller, and when Livia doesn't know what that means, Sosuke explains to her. He lets her know that resellers are the bad guys who buy merchandise out of stock, and then sell it at ridiculous prices to consumers who are desperate for the goods. Livia cannot believe that she has been tricked into doing something so stupid yet again. Sarah is angry at her, and lets her know that disembowelment should be her punishment. Livia accepts her judgment and is already walking to where she kept her sword so she can commit seppuku when Sarah lets her know that it is just a joke. Livia is happy to hear this, and she thanks Sarah for being merciful. Livia assures Sarah that she is not going to associate herself with resellers ever again. Soon afterward, Noah starts working on another of her devious business schemes that revolves around Livia, whom she now regards as their savior. To get proper data on Livia, Noah decides to track her down, and she is able to do this thanks to the biggest detective agency in town. Noah finds Livia while she is enjoying her meal under the bridge, thanks to her homelessness. Livia is shocked to see Noah, and she wonders what the girl wants with her. On the other hand, Noah is just glad that the girl actually remembers her. Noah thanks Livia for saving one of her disciples, and tells Livia about the idea that she has. Noah wants to create a statue of Livia and sell it to people, and after assuring Livia that she is not going to exploit people, Livia decides to help out. Livia follows Noah to her office, where she already has a 3D scanner ready and waiting to scan Livia's body. Livia gets in the scanner and Noah activates the machine. After the scan is complete, Noah shows Livia what it looks like on the computer and lets her know that she is going to create figurines of hers using the 3D printer. All while this is happening, Noah is dying of excitement because Livia is close to her. To Noah, Livia is now like a big celebrity, or better still, Looking closely at the prototype, Livia tells Noah that it is not going to sell that much if they can't change the clothes on the dolls. To achieve this perfect prototype, Livia will have to be scanned unclothed. Noah is shocked when Livia agrees to the offer. Noah almost faints when Livia takes her clothes off right in front of her. Throughout the scanning process, Noah remains red and in dreamland. After she is done with the scan, she quickly suggests that Livia put on her clothes again before she dies of excitement. Once they are done, Noah whips out two million as payment. But Livia is shocked to see this, and refuses to collect it, because she believes that it is too much. When Noah realizes that Livia is not going to accept the payment, Noah decides that appointing Livia as the product development advisor will be the best thing. Livia asks what she will be doing in the post, and Noah lets her know that all she needs to do is give her opinion regarding the products and point out any error that it might have. In addition to the whole unclothed scanning thing, Noah promises Livia a pretty sweet deal. Livia agrees, and before she can even blink, she's living with Noah in the lap of luxury. Noah caters to her every whim, covering all her meals while Livia lounges around like a cat with a full belly. One week later, Livia runs into Asumi at the sauna again. Asumi realizes that Livia is in a pretty good mood, and she asks her why this is. Livia reveals that she is currently working as a product development advisor for Noah, but after explaining what she does, Noah lets her know that she is nothing but a mooch. Livia doesn't know what a mooch is, and Asumi explains to her that she is a person living off Noah. Getting deeper into the conversation, Asumi asks Livia if she can play any instrument, and when Livia tells Asumi the type of instrument that she can play, Asumi realizes that Livia should be able to handle a guitar. Since her band broke up, Asumi has been looking for partners. Asumi then takes Livia to her house so she can try out the guitar and see how she copes with it. Livia plays the guitar and she gets the hang of it, but Asumi knows she still needs a bit of practice. Livia takes the guitar back home, and when Asumi sees the guitar, she tells Livia about her hobby when it comes to music. In fact, Noah has a mini studio in the house, and Livia decides to ask for Noah's opinion concerning one of Asumi's songs. When Asumi listens to the song, she points out the errors in the song. She trash talks the song so much that even Livia is shocked. Nonetheless, Noah has been able to point out where the errors are, 
She lets Livia know that the record is better off as a meme rather than an actual song. A week later, Livia is already getting good with the guitar, and even Asumi is shocked to see this. Livia then suggests that Asumi talk to Noah because she is also a songwriter. Together, Livia and Asumi return home and Asumi is blown away by how nice the house looks. Noah sits down to listen to Asumi's songs, and lets her know that she is going to become a pro, probably in a million years' time. Noah lets Asumi know that she can only make progress if she lets someone else write her songs for her. Asumi realizes that this is a good idea, and Noah is shocked when the responsibility to write the songs is pushed onto her. Noah accepts the offer and gets down to work, and she also shows them how she goes about things. Noah's excitement levels are through the roof as she realizes she's accidentally stumbled into yet another business venture, proving that her talent for turning everything into a lucrative opportunity is truly unmatched. In the next scene, Sarah and Yuna get to have fun together, and this is when it reoccurs to Sarah that she would like to go to school. Sarah tells Sosuke about this yet again. When Sosuke realizes that the girl is actually serious about it, Sosuke decides to work toward it. The next day, Sosuke talks to Brenda about it. He wants to know if there is a way a girl with no family register can go to school in the country. Sosuke tries lying that Sarah is from another country, but when he realizes that they are going to need to confirm the truth from her country of origin, Sosuke realizes that they can't go that way. Brenda tells Sosuke all the methods she knows, but none of it is going to work for Sarah in this instance. The only route they can take is to use the illegal route, but Sosuke doesn't think this is the best way to go about it. On their way home, Sarah tells Sosuke that she might be eager to go to school, but she can just continue living the way she is if there is no way out. Sarah doesn't even want Sosuke to put himself in danger because of her. Sosuke suggests that she comes out with the truth that she is from another world, but Sarah reminds Sosuke that she is probably just going to become a lab rat for the government. Sarah thinks of pretending that she has amnesia, but she is also scared that the government might actually have truth serums like they do in movies. Meanwhile, Brenda's assistant is trying to connect the dots, telling Brenda that there is a possibility that Sarah is actually Sosuke's daughter. She thinks Sosuke had an affair when he was in high school, and this resulted in the birth of Sarah. Brenda knows there is the possibility that this is true, but she is not ready to concern herself with that. Later on, Brenda hands Haruka a job that she nails with the finesse of a pro. Haruka's got a knack for making men swoon, but for some baffling reason, Sosuke remains immune to her charms. She reflects on how she first met Sosuke at the agency, where he was her mentor, probably the only guy who's ever managed to stay completely uncharmed by her. Up next, Sosuke gets the job to watch a 42-year-old husband. The wife is the client, and she believes that her husband is cheating because he has become livelier for the past couple of months. In addition, the husband buys them kinds of stuff when coming back home from late deliveries. Sosuke and Sarah get down to tracking the guy. While on the mission, Sarah shows Sosuke that she can actually change her hair color from blonde to black by using a simple spell, and she can even hold this longer than the invincibility spell. By the third day of following the guy, they have not seen him do anything out of the ordinary. The guy seems to be a straightforward person who is just doing his job. Later that day, Sosuke and Sarah realize that they have already left Gifu City while tracking the mark. They keep following the guy until they get to a horse race track. Sosuke starts taking pictures of the guy and even notices that he bets on racehorsing. They follow him to the tracks and make videos of him while he does his thing. After the first round of the race, Sosuke and Sarah are able to deduce that the mark is actually not a cheater. He is just someone who now has a hobby unlike before. Getting interested in the sport, Sosuke asks Sarah if she would be interested in placing a bet. He wants the girl to try out her luck. He explains the basics to her but he would be the one to place the bet since Sarah is a minor. To Sosuke's surprise, Sarah decides to go for the perfect trifecta which is considered the hardest. Sarah makes her pick, and they place a 100 yen bet on the horses that she picked. Sosuke doesn't think Sarah has a chance at winning, because the horses she picked don't look like the winning type. However, Sosuke is shocked at the end of the race to see that Sarah actually made a perfect trifecta to predict the winner, and those in the top 5. Their winnings for the first race turned out to be over 3,000 yen. This plays out well for Sarah, as she is able to convince Sosuke to leave the next race to her. 11 races later, Sarah has been able to turn their 100 yen into 200 thousand yen. At this point, Sosuke is blown away because they just made more than the money that they are even getting paid for the job. Sarah is the driver in this situation, and Sosuke is just a passenger. Before leaving the tracks, the two also get to discuss with their mark, who thinks Sarah is Sosuke's daughter, and they are there for father-daughter bonding. That evening, Sosuke, still in disbelief from their betting bonanza, decides it's time to pop the big question. Sosuke asks Sarah if she would like it if he adopts her, and she happily says yes. Working toward adopting Sarah, Sosuke decides to talk to the chief of the detective agency where he was previously working. Turns out that the man is actually Sosuke's father, but Sosuke left to create his own agency due to his rebellious stage. 
Knowing that he cannot trick his father with a dumb story, Sosuke tells the man that Sarah is his daughter. Sosuke goes with the story about him having an affair in high school. Sosuke lies that he had an affair with an older woman when he was in high school, and the lady decided to take responsibility for the pregnancy because he was a minor. However, the lady came to hand over the child to him about a month ago because she was ill and on the verge of dying. Sarah needs to go to school and to do this, he needs to add Sarah's name to the family's register, and this is where he needs his father's help. Even Sarah begs the old man, already calling him grandpa. Sosuke's father decides to help out, but to shock his son, he tells him that he already had Haruka look into Sara. With everything they have been able to uncover, he knows that Sara appeared out of nowhere about a month ago, and he even tells Sosuke the exact day Sara was first seen with him. At this point, Sosuke realizes that his father has really dug deep. The old man then turns to Sara, asking her who she really is. Sara decides to stop hiding behind lies, and she tells the old man that she is from another world. When she says this, the old man believes her without a doubt because he has been a detective for many years now, and he knows when someone is lying or telling him the truth. The old man assures Sosuke that he is going to help, but before he does that, he wants Sosuke to start calling him dad, instead of chief. Sosuke has no choice but to bow to his father's request. When returning home, Sarah tells Sosuke that she can see that his father actually loves him. Sosuke knows this also, but he just doesn't want his father to get too comfortable. The old man remains happy the entire day, even yapping about Sosuke's visit to Haruka. The old man is excited by the fact that he is going to become a grandfather anytime soon. Haruka thinks well over this, and realizes that marrying Sosuke automatically makes her Sarah's mother. This is all too much for the lady to take in, and she starts wondering how she is going to cope. Chill out, Beach. Sosuke is not even your boyfriend yet, not to talk of being your husband. Later on, Yuna and Sarah spend quality time together. After they are done seeing a movie, Sarah talks about the possibility of attending a school very soon. This is exciting news for Yuna because Sarah can easily attend the same middle school as her. Yuna has no friends since the entire bullying thing, and having Sarah around will go a long way. Sarah is also excited about the possibility that she is going to be in the same school as Yuna. Sarah assures Yuna that she is not going to have any friends aside from her. At Noah's residence, she prepares shrimp tempura for them to eat. This is familiar to Livia because she is now an expert in preparing grasshopper tempura. Livia decides to show her skills when it comes to the grasshopper tempura since Asumi is coming over. That night, they all get to eat the grasshopper tempura that Livia made, leaving Noah shocked at how delicious it is. In fact, Noah is already thinking about how this can be turned into a profitable business. Asumi, meanwhile, is less than thrilled about the grasshopper banquet but finds herself stuck with it. Every sneaky attempt to hide or dispose of the crunchy critters ends in spectacular failure, leaving her with no choice but to face the grasshopper feast head on. While sleeping, Noah gets inspiration on what they are to name the band. Noah sees Livia in her dream, and coupled with the fact that she ate Grasshopper the night before, she wakes up the next morning to inform Asumi and Noah that their brand should be named Grasshopper the Savior. Surprisingly, Asumi and Livia go with the idea too. Later on, Sarah and Sosuke sit down to calculate Sarah's age using Japan's calendar. Sarah is supposed to be 13 years of age, but because of Japanese calculation, she is 12 years old. This has a downside because Sarah will be attending an elementary school instead of a junior high. Not long after this, Sarah's registration is done, and she is now ready to go to school. Sosuke's father and Sosuke are there to escort Sarah to school. Sosuke's father is really taking the whole grandpa thing really seriously, and he is ready to spoil Sarah with whatever it is that she needs. The old man even buys Sarah a very expensive school bag for her to pack her things for school. This just shows how doting the old man actually is. When Sarah arrives at her new school, the principal informs her school teacher not to ask Sarah personal questions about her past. Even during her introductions, Sarah tells her classmates what they need to know, but lets them know that they are not allowed to ask her personal questions. At this point, the teacher starts to wonder if Sarah is a faraway princess, who is just there to pretend like a common man. It doesn't take long before Sarah starts attracting attention like a magnet, and it's not even on purpose. She solves questions pretty easily, and at the same time, she is outspoken. The guys are already swooning around her, even the girls' clique wants Sarah to be their friend. In the ruler battle game, Sarah becomes the superstar, but all of this attention just keeps triggering the former most popular girl in the class. It's like she's watching her throne get snatched by a girl who didn't even know there was a throne to begin with. When it is time for the English lesson, Sarah aces it spectacularly, and even creates a mini play out of it. Even the outcast of the class finds himself getting close to Sarah, and this shows how attractive Sarah's personality is. During lunch, Sarah consumes her food pretty quickly, leaving the other students amazed. Sarah tells them the importance of food, and this urges the other classmates to also finish up their food, which is something quite unusual. The popular girl has had enough of Sarah stealing her spotlight, and decides it's time to knock this newbie down a peg. Later in the day, she and her friends trick Sarah into the storeroom and lock her in. 
They plan to leave her there for some hours and probably get her to reconsider her ways. Sarah knocks on the door, asking them to open up, but they refuse. Realizing that they are not ready to let her out, she decides to use her power to unlock the door. The girls are shocked when they see Sarah walk out of the storeroom. They are even more shocked when they realize that Sarah is not angry. Sarah lets them know that she is not ready to get angry at what is considered a childish prank. This gets to the wannabe bully, and she gets on her knees, begging Sarah to forgive her. The girl even takes it far by offering herself as a slave to Sarah. The other girls also join her, begging Sarah to forgive them. Sarah lets it go pretty easily, and with this, Sarah already has her footing in the class. When Sarah returns home, Sosuke asks Sarah how her day was, and she gets to tell the guy how eventful her day was. Meanwhile, Yuna is boiling because Sarah apparently betrayed her. They are supposed to attend middle school together, but Sarah is attending an elementary school while Yuna is stranded in middle school. Yuna is in the bathroom when she overhears some girls bullying one of her classmates. Yuna is able to chase them away by making sure they know that her presence is in the room. Later that day, Yuna figures out who the bullied girl is. The next day, Yuna catches the bullies in the act yet again but this time around, she gets there fast enough to save the victim before the bullies get their way. Yuna lies that the teacher wants to see the victim and uses this to get her away from her oppressors. The victim is grateful to the fact that Yuna saved her but she is worried that things might get even worse for her if she tries to fight back. This is because the bullies are on the same basketball team as her and everything started when the coach picked her as a regular. Yuna then asks her if she will be willing to involve a lawyer in the case. Since the victim is ready, Yuna will help her get the evidence she needs. It worked out for her so it should work for the girl too. Yuna then plants a cheap spy camera behind the poster, which is located on the stairs. This is a place where the victim is always bullied, and Yuna thinks it is the best place to get the evidence that they need. Once the bug is in place, the victim waits, like a character in a cheesy spy movie, for the bullies to summon her to the usual spot. The victim gives them the money they demand, and also makes them confess to bullying her. Yuna is able to record all of these and then calls the operation off once she has everything she needs. Yuna then tells the victim that it is up to her to do whatever she wants with the video. Later that day, Yuna visits Sarah's home. Sarah uses the opportunity to apologize to Yuna for not honoring their agreement. Yuna forgives her because she knows it is not her fault that she didn't. Yuna then tells Sosuke the main reason she came to the house. Yuna shows Sosuke the bullying video that she secretly recorded. It turns out that Yuna is now considering being a detective in the future because the career seems to be a fun one, and she likes fun. Up next, Noah is in the final stages of completing figurines, but she intentionally gets some personal touches from Livia herself. Livia is also excited that the figurines are almost ready, because she has plans to give Sarah one of them as a Christmas present. Noah gets jealous immediately when she hears this, but Livia lets the girl know that Sarah is her master. Noah immediately becomes interested in this person, because anyone who surpasses Livia should be considered a After wrapping up the whole data collection fiasco, Noah hands Livia her daily allowance. Livia, feeling extra confident, decides to hit up a gambling house, thinking she can double the money and finally pay Noah back for all the cash she's borrowed. But instead of turning into a high roller, she ends up on a losing streak that would make a slot machine blush. As her stack of cash disappears, Livia realizes she's just dug herself a deeper hole. Looks like paying Noah back is going to take a lot more than beginner's luck. Livia is enjoying her meal when the deceitful blonde guy shows up again. Livia scolds him for deceiving her, but the guy lets Livia know that it is not illegal to be a reseller. Nonetheless, Livia lets the guy know that she will never fall for his schemes again. The guy still finds a way to sell the horse race gambling to Livia, and she buys it. Livia heads to the horse tracks to bet on the horses, but still loses. While she is thinking about her loss, Noah shows up, and Livia tells the girl that things would actually be easy for her if she was the one riding the horses. However, Noah assures Livia that she is going to support her with whatever she needs to be a seasoned gambler. And just like that, Livia's status changes to a gambler. On the other hand, Sosuke goes to Brenda's office for a job, and this is when he tells her about Sarah and the fact that she is his daughter. Brenda hears this and starts starts thinking about how she is going to become Sarah's mother if she gets married to Sosuke. After Sosuke's departure, Brenda's assistant lets her know that she needs to pick things up pretty quickly because she is already losing her chance to get Sosuke to be her man. The assistant suggests that Brenda does everything in her power to make sure Sosuke becomes her man. Luckily for her, she has what it takes since she is considered an important woman in the city. The following week, Brenda tries getting Sosuke's attention with money, but it doesn't freaking work. In fact, it goes the wrong way because Sosuke thinks Brenda is trying to flaunt her money. Sosuke tells Brenda that he is quite comfortable as it is already because even Sarah is earning high at the race tracks. Sosuke knows Sarah is too young to bet, and because of this, she is the one buying the tickets. Sosuke ends up leaving the office looking quite indifferent, and Brenda believes the guy now hates her. However, Brenda's assistant assures her that Sosuke cannot hate her just because of that. She knows Sosuke is a mature person, and she suggests that Brenda get his attention through her personality. Later on, Brenda talks with Haruka to try and learn from her. 
She wants to know how she gets men to swoon around her. Haruka knows that Brenda has someone she is interested in, and she asks her to describe the person's personality so she can know how to go about it. Unknown to the two, they are both interested in the same man. After telling Haruka everything she needs to know, Haruka then replies, Brenda can get to the guy by using a simple method. Haruka displays this by touching Brenda causing the lady's heart to skip. Haruka explains that a personal touch should work and also her personality should be top-notch. Haruka also suggests that Brenda cook for the lady. Brenda has never cooked before but Haruka assures Brenda that she can help her. You can start cooking from today, Haruka says. Haruka then takes Brenda under her wings to try and teach her how to cook. Brenda is able to make what can be said to be a perfect dish and what is left is for Sosuke to try it out. However, Things go sideways for her because Sosuke has already eaten when she tries to give him the food. At this point, nothing seems to be working for Brenda. Even her assistant just shakes her head because she doesn't think there is hope for Brenda again after this. It is finally Christmas, and Sarah being the popular girl at school, ends up getting all the presents. In fact, she returns home exhausted after so many gifts and presents. Just when she is about to start resting after returning home, Livia shows up with a present. Livia then learns that Sarah has already accepted her new life in this world. Sarah tells Livia to forget about the master-servant relationship and just focus on her new life. Livia thanks her for the advice and assures her that she will forever treasure her. Livia then unveils the gift and it turns out to be her figurine. Livia lets Sarah and Sosuke know that it was specially created for Sarah. Sarah checks out the figurine only for her to realize that it actually feels so real. Sarah becomes totally irritated when she realizes that the doll has real hair collected from Livia. Sarah gets angry and chases both the doll and Livia out of the room. Livia returns to Noah, letting her know that the band is all she now has left. Later on, Sosuke decides to take Sarah to the aquarium so that she can check out the marine life. Sarah has a fun time looking at fish and turtles while at the aquarium. Returning home, she sings about her love for fishes and how she likes eating them, which is pretty much wild because she just left the aquarium. The irony is strong with this one. Sosuke just stares, wondering if they should have skipped the aquarium and hit a sushi bar instead. In the next scene, Asumi and Noah argue about lyrics, and with the way things are going, the band is making zero progress whatsoever. Livia just sits there, eating whatever it is she can stuff in her mouth and refusing to interfere in what the two have going on. On the other hand, Haruka and Brenda think of the next thing to make, which can actually help them get their man. Brenda thinks hard about this and comes up with chocolate. Brenda is opting to go with chocolate because she cannot stand to look Sosuke in the eyes and tell him what she actually feels for him. Haruka looks through the internet to see how to make chocolate. Once they have gotten all the methods, they start procuring the machines that they need. The two make use of Brenda's home once they have all the required ingredients to make freaking chocolate. The two are confident that they are going to pull through and make the best chocolate out there. The two invest their time in this chocolate thing and even decide to take the day off from work just so they can fully focus on their love of chocolate. After all, they are making the chocolate for their lover. The two sit down with both online and book manuals to get a read on the chocolate making process. After hours of preparation, the two become exhausted and realize that making chocolate is actually quite hard. They now realize why chocolates are quite expensive. This is because of the time, effort, and money that have been put into making it. After their first attempt that went horribly wrong, the two decide not to allow it to bring them down. They decide to continue trying it until they can get the hang of it. Elsewhere, Sosuke is reading a novel depicting Livia's life, which was written by Suzuki, when he hears the bell on the door. The man asks Sosuke about Livia because he heard she was working at the agency, but Sosuke tells the strange man that Livia is no longer at the agency. It turns out that the strange man is Suzuki, whom Livia met when he was homeless. Suzuki has shaved off his beard making him look entirely different. In addition to this, he was also the one who wrote the novel depicting Livia's life. Apparently Suzuki was a writer but he got tired because of the fame that comes with it and he decided to become homeless. However, meeting Livia actually changed his life. Suzuki decided to return to his life and this is the reason he wrote the novel about his helper. After learning that Livia is not at the agency, Suzuki leaves. When he discovers that Livia is missing from the agency, he figures he might as well play superhero and track her down. Suzuki soon finds Livia practicing her guitar under the same bridge where he used to live. When he approaches her, Livia doesn't recognize him, and it is understandable because he has totally changed. After getting introductions through and Livia realizes that she is talking to Suzuki, she becomes very happy to see him. As the conversation continues, Livia learns that Suzuki is a writer, an idea then comes to her head. Since the band is having issues with their lyrics, she begs Suzuki to help out. Suzuki is not confident in his skills to write a song, but decides to help out. A few days later, Suzuki presented the written lyrics to the band and it turned out very well. 
They are happy with the lyrics he provided and with this, they know that they have a chance to do well for the band. Their band, The Grasshopper the Savior, finally has a chance on the big stage. Up next, Yuna and Sarah both receive a load of chocolates as gifts. Sosuke is shocked to see the amount of chocolates that the two have in stock in just one day. On the other hand, Haruka and Brenda have finally finished up their chocolate processing and now have tasty and delicious chocolate to show for it. Sosuke shows up at Brenda's office later that day, and Brenda decides to give him chocolate. However, Brenda's luck hits the wall yet again when Sosuke tells her that he has loads of chocolate waiting for him back home. Later on, Livia's band gets booked for a performance, and the trio is ready to show the people what they have got. The event is slated for 6pm, but Livia decides to gamble during the day, and use that to while away time. For the first time since she started gambling, she finally gets lucky. But guess what? It is almost 6pm already, and Livia has no choice but to run out of the casino. Livia starts running to where the band is going to perform. Her band members are already waiting for her, and Livia knows that there is no room for mistake. With no time for screw-ups, Livia sprints through the snow-covered city like she's in an action movie. At one point, she even falls down. However, she doesn't allow this to slow her down. Livia gets back up and arrives at the location just before her band is called to the stage. Noah and Asumi are relieved to see Livia because they are already worried about her. Upon getting to the stage, the trio delivers a very powerful performance that electrifies the crowd and gets everyone dancing. Even Suzuki is present for the performance, and he enjoys every minute of it. With this, the band recorded their first success. Later that night, the band gets a record deal from one of the biggest music record labels. It is finally time for Sarah's graduation from elementary school, and Sosuke is present. Sosuke is shocked to see that his father is also present, and this is a man who totally forgot about Sosuke's graduation. Sosuke is left in total shock when he realizes that Sarah is very popular in the school, even though her time in the school was short. Sarah even gets a special farewell message composed for her by the students. It seems like everyone at school knows Sarah, even the teachers are practically her fan club. After she's given a special honor, Sarah strolls up to the stage, all cool and collected, to thank everyone. Then, she busts out into a show-stopping song that has the whole crowd waving like they're at a rock concert. Even Sosuke is given a glow bulb, and he joins the crowd in waving. Sarah spots Sosuke in the crowd, and she winks at him to let him know. Sosuke is relieved that the girl is actually having fun. As time goes on, Livia's band starts pulling more crowds, and they are now selling out concerts and the like. The band is still preparing for their major debut, when the police show up to arrest Noah for insider trading. Livia is shocked to see this because everything they have built is just about to crash to the ground. Later on, Brenda hears the news on TV, and decides to pursue the case. Sosuke and Sarah also learn of this on the news. Sosuke also decides to look into the case and see if Noah is truly guilty, or if she is innocent. Brenda soon finds out that she and Sosuke are working on the same case, and she wants to use this opportunity to get even closer to Sosuke and impress him. The story ends on a cliffhanger, leaving everyone on edge. Will Livia's band crash and burn, or will they somehow pull off a miraculous save? Stay tuned for the next chapter in this roller coaster of a saga. Thanks for sticking around till the end of the video. Remember to smash that like button and subscribe for more awesome content. Got an anime you're dying to see recapped? Drop it in the comments, and we'll make it happen. Catch you later, folks.